Marry those single ones from amongst you and the righteous ones, whether male or female. The key word here I want us to highlight, dear brothers and sisters, is as salihin, the righteous ones. Look at the criteria that was set by Allah Jalla Jalalu. We are not saying to dismiss other important factors like kafa'a, compatibility between the spouses and other personal desires or requests, things that you wish for as a man or as a woman in this person. We are talking about the bedrock. We are talking about the pillar of the marriage. We are talking about what will last and survive the test of time. Marriage is a journey that is filled with challenges where you are required to make some very tough decisions sometimes in that marital relationship. And we as human beings, we make decisions on the basis of values that we have. And as Muslims, the most important value for us is Islam and the pleasure of Allah. Therefore, the more Islam you share with your spouse, the easier it will be to make those difficult decisions in life because you're both singing from the same hymn sheet. You're both in the same waters. But when the bedrock of religion is missing or you guys are at completely different levels because you didn't take it into consideration when getting married, making those decisions in life becomes very complicated. Basic questions may cause a dispute. Like, which school are we going to send our children to? Are we going to save up money for Hajj next year or not? Are we going to dedicate a space in the house to pray together as a family? Yeah. Basic questions like halal and haram food, where should we be eating from? Income, how are we making money in this household? Basic questions becomes a source of fighting. Look at how the Messenger وسلم, has emphasized the importance of finding righteousness in the male, finding righteousness in the female. As for the men, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said, in the hadith which Imam al-Tirmidhi narrates on the authority of Abu Hatim al-Muzani, he said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوا سَوِّجُوهُ If a man comes to you wanting the hand of your daughter in marriage, and you are satisfied with his religious commitment, and you are satisfied with his manners, then accept that person. Then accept that person. What was the condition for the husband Akhlaq, manners, and religion. Subhanallah, ajeeb that both of them have come hand in hand. The, the relationship cannot truly be successful and properly prosper Islamically if one of those two are missing. It's not enough to say, this man is on the deen, but there's no manners with the people. And it's also the opposite scenario is probably more likely, where a sister, she may say to her family, I'm interested in this individual. He has such good manners. But he's not praying at the moment. Inshallah, he will change. Prophet ﷺ said, you're happy with his religion and you're happy with his conduct, with people, with his akhlaq. This is a person to marry. That is what he said about husbands. What did he say about wives? Something very similar. A parallel hadith, Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Abi Hurairah. That the Messenger ﷺ said, in the famous hadith, Tunkahu al-mar'atu, of course, every brother has memorized this hadith. Tunkahu al-mar'atu li arba. لجمالها ولحسبها ولمالها ولدينها فاظفر بذات الدين تربت يداك He said women are usually married on the basis of several matters either because of her beauty or her lineage or her money or her religion Then the Prophet وسلم, said I advise you O Muslims to marry the religiously committed one may you prosper may you prosper Allahu Akbar Is this the type of person I see raising my children? Is this the type of man she may say who I see myself with in another 40 years from now? Many issues could have been resolved if we had been a little bit more diligent and did the background checks and fought with our brains, not with other parts of our body. Marry those who are righteous, Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty instructs. Maybe you have also experienced it where a brother may go to a particular family having an interest in the daughter of that family. And then you see the level of importance that is placed just by virtue of the questions that are asked. Yes. So the question may be, do you have a job? Are you working? And he says something along the lines of, I'm in the process or I'm looking for work or something like that. And because of that, it's a blanket rejection. Nothing else investigated. Now, I appreciate that fathers would like to take care of the prosperity of their daughters and they want them protected. I have no issues with that. My main issue is with the other scenario now. If we flip around this scenario, where they may ask him, are you working? He says, yeah, I'm working. And I, and I have a house. 
and I have a car, everything's in place, doctor, architect, whatever it may be. And the news comes to the family that this man doesn't pray. This man is just a one shot hit Friday Jum'ah Salah. They say, inshallah, he'll start praying. He will change. Ajeeb. So when it comes to the conditions about dunya, we're very rigid and uncompromising. But when it comes to religion, we're very lax. And then we wonder, subhanallah al azim why a few months into this relationship or a few years, we get the phone call that your daughter has just been battered. She's been hit, she's been broken or bruised. Or we, he starts complaining, for example, that she has no idea about his rights in, in, in the house and he doesn't feel like he's being treated as a king of the home. Well, there's a basic rule here that was overlooked by all of those involved in this scenario, which is that if this person is unable to give Allah Almighty his basic rights, what makes you think he's going to give your daughter her rights? Honestly, use it as a benchmark. It solves so many issues and it gives you an indicator of the person at hand, regardless of the smiles and what they may say about themselves. Really, brothers and sisters, it could happen and it has happened. And there are good examples of relationships that got off on the wrong foot, don't get me wrong. And Allah had mercy upon them. But this is not the default. The default is, أَنْكِحُوا الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ Look for those people of righteousness. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrates on the authority of Thawban, the companions, they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, ayyul mali nattakhid? What type of wealth should we seek to acquire? He gave them an answer that they were not expecting. He said to them, لِيَتَّخِذْ أَحَدُكُمْ قَلْبًا شَاكِرًا وَلِسَانًا ذَاكِرًا وَامْرَأَةً صَالِحَةً تُعِينُ أَحَدَكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ الْآخِرَةِ He said, the wealth that you should seek to attain is this. You should seek to attain a heart that is grateful to Allah and a mouth that is praising Allah and a righteous spouse who will help you in your journey to the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. And he said, Ad-dunya mata' The hadith of Muslim on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Ad-dunya mata' Life is an enjoyment. Wa khayru mata'iha al-mar'atu salihah The best enjoyment that this world could offer is a righteous wife. La ilaha illallah. A disclaimer I would like to add here by the way. What is your understanding of a righteous wife, a righteous husband by the way? Is our understanding of a righteous spouse that Allah wants from us is a, uh, is a woman who is in a black abaya from head to toe and her face is covered in the, you can't see an inch of her body. Is this the religious ukhti that you're looking for? And I am not belittling that. The hijab is part of the deen and the niqab is part of the deen. No one can take that away from the religion, regardless of how many TEDx talks they would like to give. But I am talking about, what is the religion in your eyes? Akhil Kareem, just so that you're not disappointed later on in your relationship. Gloves and socks and face cover. This is the religion, limited, limited to exclusive to this? And then you find out that this woman behind this veil that has impressed you is backstabbing. She's a backstabbing, lying woman. Or she is a namama, a woman who moves between people spreading gossip to spread corruption and break relationships. Or she is an individual who has many different faces, mashallah. And we have seen this over and over again, brothers and sisters. And the same I will say for our sisters. What is your understanding of a religious brother who has a long beard and a miswak in his pocket and a short thought? And don't get me wrong, this is from the religion. And no one can belittle that or take it away. But I am saying, what is your understanding of a religious man? He may be dressed apart. He may have videos on YouTube and a huge following on social media. But he's an addict to pornography. So he's an addict to other types of substances that he's injecting or inhaling or selling even. La ilaha illallah. It's not possible. He could be a man who has hasad, so much envy towards other people. He may have fallen out with his mom and dad. She may not be speaking with her parents either. What is your understanding of a religious person? Just the madahir? Madahir, outward appearance, but no makhabir. No internal, no internal quality. Part of the deen, Akhil Kareem, Ukhtil Kareem, is akhlaq, is manners. Did he وسلم, not say that the heaviest thing that will be weighed on the day of judgment is manners? Religion is, is, is not cheating people with regards to their wealth, not conning them out of their money, not bringing in haram money into the house. That's religion. Religion is when you, sister Ukhtil Kareem, you guard your tongue. You don't speak about people behind their backs. You don't show hasad, envy towards something khair that others have. Allah has given some and you want to take it away from them. Religion is about having a pure heart clean heart that doesn't harbor enmity towards a believer. How can we ensure that the person we are looking to marry is a righteous person? What do we do? There are several things that we can do and we have to ultimately rely upon Allah. 
one of those things that we can do from a practical perspective is make dua now if you are not a married person particularly and even if you're married make the quranic dua rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata a'yun oh allah give us from our spouses and from our children those who will be the coolness of our eyes and ask many of those brothers and sisters who are living some of the happiest days of their lives today they will tell you we used to make this dua religiously back when we were still bachelors Dua. Second thing, when marriage gets a little bit more real, right? Istikhara, the prayer of consultation. Learn how to pray it if you are not sure. Pray it over and over again and don't wait for a dream. Don't wait for a vision. Number three, background checks, references. Don't get caught in the moment. Love at first sight. We have to get married regardless of who agrees or disagrees. Akhil Karim, Ukhtil Karima, just for your peace of mind and to spare you a headache, do your background checks. Test the religion of that person one way or another in what is suitable and appropriate. Give it time to simmer. Do your background checks and be patient.